Rossi, Cararara 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 Rossi, Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to your wonderful name, Jesus. Oh, glory to your wonderful name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the work and power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God, for surely this is a day that you have made. We're rejoicing and being glad in it. Father God, we thank you for, for in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. Um, Father God, we thank you for gathering us all around the world, Lord God. Um, hallelujah. See, connecting us, Lord God, uh, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Uh, for we are unified, oneness and one accord, Lord God, uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for watching over us last night, keeping us, <coughs> protecting us, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon our life this day, Lord God. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for covering us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for shaking us, God, and waking us up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for every vessel that comes on today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the seven days of consecration time, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for gathering us, God. I thank you, Lord God, that we have sensed, oh God, things are changing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we don't want to be left behind, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for going down on the inside of us, oh God, and uprooting and gutting out every foul, corrupt, perverted, wicked. Glory to God, think that it's not of you, Father God, that will not bring praise or glory or honor to your name, Lord God. Father, we thank you this day, Lord God. My God, we thank you, Lord God. There's an open heaven over our life today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for healing is our portion, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for ordering our steps in your word on today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for a right now word, oh God, in the name of Jesus, under the Oshaya, for a right now people, oh God. We thank you, Lord, as we come into the month of the eighth month, oh God. God, the month of August, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have sent the angel before us, oh God. The angel of the Lord that has went before us, oh God. Making every crooked path straight, every rough edge smooth, Lord God. Giving us another most city that will see water, hallelujah. And dry places, oh God. Causing things to be smooth in rough places, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that I'm on Messiah. My God, let the ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us this month, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord God. Glory to God, that I'm on Messiah, for not leaving us behind. Father, thank you, Lord God. My God, I'm going for storing us, oh God. My God, we thank you, Lord God. It's all about you this day, Lord God. My God, we surrender all, oh God. We lay our life on the altar, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And everything and everybody that's connected to us, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for purging them, oh God, and the places and the things, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that is obeying you and honoring you, oh God, and praising you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, begin in the purge and purifies even the more, Lord God. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, consecrate us even the more unto thee, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God, for clothing us in salvation and covering us in your righteousness. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the crown of life, Lord God. We thank you this day, Lord God, for the steps of a good man are ordered by you this day, Lord God. Father, we thank you. My God, we thank you today, Lord God, for our names are ever before you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you 
today, Lord God, for the battle is not ours, it belongs to you, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, my God, that you have not forgotten about us, oh God. We thank you today, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus is covering, oh God, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. My God, we thank you, Lord, that the blood is cleansing, oh God, that the blood is purifying us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for giving us a sound mind today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you this day, Lord God. We choose the door of life and good, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you today, Lord God. No weapon formed against us this day will be able to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord Oshaya. We thank you today, Lord God. We shall live and not die to declare the works of the true and living God in the name of Jesus. We thank you today, Lord God, for you have chosen us, oh God, in the furnace of affliction, oh God. And Father, I thank you today, Lord God, that you call me, Lord God, my God, from the gutter, oh God, and you have cleansed me up, God, and you're constantly cleansing me up, oh God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God. Glory to God, I'm see for great is thy faithfulness. I thank you today, Lord God. My God, for you are Jehovah. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah Tiskanu. My God, you're El Elyon. And Father, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord God. My God, there was no God before you, Father. And there will be no God after you, Father. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God for keeping us. We thank you, Lord God for healing us, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us from unseen and seen danger, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God that you release your angels. My God, to encamp around about our houses, around about us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for taking the scales off our eyes, oh God, to see through the eyes of you, Lord God. Father, we thank you today, Lord God. My God, for giving us a true balance in our life, Lord God, that we will not have a false balance Balance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today, Lord God. Every need is met in our homes, oh God. Every need is met in our bodies, oh God. Every need is met in our minds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for, 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 for purifying us, oh God. Perfecting that which concerns us today, Lord God. We thank you today, Lord God. My God, I don't know, see, for a fresh wind blowing in our life on today. We thank you today, Lord God, for an open door, oh God like never before, God, and that you're calling us up, Lord God, like you called John the Revelator, Lord God, and say, come hither, for I have something to show you today. Father, I thank you, Lord, and Oshaya, my God, you're causing me, and my God, to give into our bosom today, rest down, shaking together, and running over, oh God, I thank you today, Lord God, hallelujah, for you the keeper of our soul, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you today, Lord God, for you said it your word, oh God, and we hunger and thirst after you, Lord God. My God of the Messiah, you will begin to fill us, oh God, and we hunger and thirst after righteousness, that you will fill us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for fresh oil of the anointing, because the little Messiah is the anointing that destroys yoke and lift every burden. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. For the blessings of you make it rich and add no sorrow. We thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My see your promises. Yea and amen. And Father, we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory. For restoration. For reviving. And renewing, oh God. And restoring, oh God. My God, we thank you, Lord God. For you are faithful, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for you are great and greatly to be praised. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God, for overthrowing the works of the enemy today, Lord God. My God, destroying his assignment against us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God, for causing our enemies to be our footstool today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. 
Oh God, we thank you, Lord God. Oh God, for many of the afflictions of the righteous. But Father, you delivered us out of all our trouble, oh God. You said when the righteous cry, you hear, Lord God, and you come and you deliver. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your ears are attentive to us today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, oh God, for stripping things off of us, oh God. Should never be upon us, oh God. We thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory. Yes, Lord, fulfilling your promises, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, KBC, but there is an open heaven of our life, oh God. And Father, we thank you today, Lord God. For you are great, God. You are our strong tower. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I bless you today. Yes, Lord, I praise you today. Yes, Lord, I magnify you today. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for the consecration time, God. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for changing what needs to be changed in my life. I thank you for renewing will need to be renewed in my life. I thank you for moving what need to be moved out of my life, oh God. I thank you for bringing what need to be brought in my life, oh God. In the name of Jesus. But Father, you know what is best for us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we surrender all this day, oh God. And we thank you that you kept our mind stayed upon you for you said in your word of God them that keep their mind upon you my God stayed upon you we will have peace oh God in the name of Jesus oh God it be so call me I thank you today Lord God for fresh revelation I thank you today Lord God for fresh discernment I thank you today Lord God for fresh all of the anointing upon our lips today oh God I thank you today Lord God because you're doing it by your spirit God you're doing Doing it because you want to do it. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for not killing us, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for not turning us over to the enemy, God. Oh God, because of our disobedience, oh God. Because I never see about coming short, oh God. I thank you, Taylor Laboshanda. Oh, keep me I know the Laboshanda. I thank you, Lord. Oh, glory, see, I know my mercy. Can't nobody do us like you, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for fine-tuning us in you, oh God. My God, keeping us in rhythm and in timing of you, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for right now, word. For right now, people of God, we thank you today, Lord God, for causing us to see, Lord God, exposing the enemy, God, exposing his tactics, oh God, exposing his assignment, oh God. You said in your word, oh God, that everything done in the dark, God, you will bring it to the light, oh God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, oh God, that you have graced us today, Lord God, to not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, oh God. I thank you today, Lord God, that you have caused us, oh God, oh God, oh God, with every temptation, you have made a way of escape, God, and we're taking the exit sign, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you today, Lord God, oh God, remember us for prospering us, in the word of God, for prospering us, oh God, in the things of God, and you said in your word, oh God, that everything we touch, God, according to what you tell us, it shall prosper, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, that you're causing us to arise, oh God, in power, in authority, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you today, Lord God, that that you've given us dominion. Oh, glory to his wonderful name. I thank you today, Lord God. You are our shepherd and we shall not want. You make it us to lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside the still waters. You restore our souls. Am I God in the path of righteousness for your name's sake? Yea, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we fear no evil because you are with us. Your rod, your staff, it does comfort us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Messiah. You've anointed our head with oil, and our cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our life, and you have blessed us to dwell in your presence forever, Lord God. And one thing we desire, Lord God, is to dwell in your presence and to inquire in your temple, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you today, Lord God, for the consecration, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we say, Shana, na, no, no, say. Oh, God, we thank you for the light and the form of rain. And we thank you, Lord God, for removing everything, oh, God, from around us, oh, God, that will hinder us, oh, God, that will delay us, oh, God, that will cause us to stumble, oh, God. We thank you for removing it, oh, God, because, God, we choose you. We choose you. We want you more than we want anything or anybody or any place, God. We thank you, Lord. Glory to God for calling us by name, God, to call us 
close to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you for working in us, oh God. Work in salvation. Work in righteousness. Work in grace. Work in mercy in us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. I thank you today, Lord God. My God, but thanks be unto God. You've given us the victory, oh God. Thanks be unto you, Lord. You won't leave us, oh God. Glory to God in the hands of the enemy. But you're delivering us, oh God. You're giving us and us see the victory in the name of Jesus. And you said in your word, oh God, that we shall say we shall see our enemies, oh God. We shall see them, oh God. As they try to hurt us, God. Hurtness will begin to come upon them, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh Father, I thank you, Lord. Because you said in your word, oh God, you call us friends, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. Like you call Abram, God. You call Abram friends, oh God. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are your friend, oh God. And you reveal things to us, God, that you won't reveal to other people, God, because you call us friend, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for gracing us to walk in power, power and authority. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. You called us the head and not the tail. You called us above and not beneath. My God, we thank you today, Lord Oshanda. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you have fulfilled your word, God. And you are constantly fulfilling your word, God. And Father, we thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God. For you have brought us out, oh God. You brought us out to the other side, oh God. Because you said in your word, let us go to the other side, God. And you brought us safely to the other side, God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you called the angel to go before us, oh God. And the angel shall protect us, oh God. And the angel shall begin to provide, oh God. And the angel shall tell us what to do, when to do, and how to do, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we submit ourselves to you, God, and we commit our works to you, God, and we commit our ways to you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we give you thanks today. We give you thanks, God. You are God. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are the great I am. Oh, God, we give you thanks today. We don't have nothing to cry about because you got it all in the palm of your hands, God. Oh, glory to KB. So call my nana Mahaya. We give you thanks today, Lord God, because everything crooked shall be made straight. We thank you today, Lord God. Oh God, we speak life today. We speak deliverance today. We speak healing today. Father, we thank you today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, my God, that your hand is upon our life, oh God. That you overshadow us with your presence, oh God. That your glory is being revealed in our life today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, as we begin to read the word on today, Lord God. Oh God, that I will see the song of Solomon. Allow us to see through your eyes. Allow Allow us to read it through your eyes. Give us clarity, insight, and understanding. We thank you today, Lord God, that you're bringing us out of the dunghill. We thank you today, Lord God, that you're bringing us back to life, God. Oh, God, everything that was dead around us, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, that shall rise again, shall rise again, and everything that shall not, shall not rise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us your word, oh, God, for you watch it over your word, and you will begin to perform your word. Not one word shall fall to the ground, Lord. All that you say, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord of Oshaya. We thank you today, Lord God, for we are glory to God. We are your purpose, oh God. You purpose us to live and not die. You purpose us, Lord God, to be a witness of Jesus Christ. You purpose us today, Lord God, to walk in faith, oh God, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You purpose us today, Lord God, to live holy, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> and we thank you, Lord, that I'm shy. We thank you today, Lord God, for thank you, Lord. You to begin to pray thank you for 6 to 630. You don't speak in tongues. You speak in tongues in your heavenly language at midnight. But 6 to 630, you are to be thanking God. Oh, glory to God. You to be thanking him for the next six days because we're in the first day. At 6 to 630, you are to thank God. At 12 midnight is the midnight cry, which was powerful and awesome last night. 
in the name of Jesus. That's where you speak to the Messiah in your heavenly language. But you that thank God from 6 a.m. to 6 30. Oh, glory to his wonderful name. You that thank him for being God. You are thank him for keeping you from hurt, harm, and danger. You are to thank him for not wiping you out. You are to thank him for not killing you. Oh, yes, God will do it. Oh, glory to God. It is the Messiah. You are to thank him for not taking stuff from you. In the name of Jesus. You are to thank him for keeping you, keeping your family protected. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, Lord. 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 I thank you because your hand is on my family. I thank you, Lord, because your hand is on the ministry. I thank you, Lord, because your hand is upon my life. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us insight, that you've given us understanding. I thank you today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. I thank you for every vessel, God, that is upon Facebook Live this day, oh God. I thank you for every vessel, Lord God, that is going and walking into the consecration, oh God. My God, that our lives would change, oh God, that we'd be more sensitive, oh God, to the things of you, oh God. Sensitive, oh God, to your word, oh God, that we'd be more sensitive, oh God, and walk in more of obedience, oh God. My God, that I'm be submission, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Walking in the spirit of humility. Walking in the spirit, having a teachable spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus. But Father, we are nothing without you, Lord God. We are nothing. We can do nothing without you. We can go nowhere without you. We can't make it without you. Lord, if you hold, my God, your hand from us. If you hold the next breath, we will die. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. For causing us to live. To cause us to conquer today. In the name of Jesus. Conquering thyself, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because it is so. We thank you for clean hands and a pure heart, God. Go down on the inside, my God, and take out that stony heart and put in a heart of flesh, oh God. My God, put in that little see huh? The heart that obeys you, the heart that submits to you, the heart that surrenders to you, the heart that wants you, Lord God, want to please you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, take out that messy heart. Take out that heart, oh God, that's corrupted. Take out that heart, oh God, oh God, that is selfish. Take out that heart, oh God. Oh glory to Take it out, God. We thank you, Lord. See, we don't want it, oh God. We want the heart of flesh, oh God. The heart that would say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will and yes to your way. The heart that said whatever we got to walk away from. In the name of Jesus, we won't fight it, oh God, because I choose you, God. I choose you over anything and anybody because you're my strength. You are my help. You are my keeper. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are the great I am. My God, I thank you today, Lord God. I thank you today, Lord God. I thank you today, Lord God. It's not nothing I done so great God that you chose me you chose me because you wanted to choose me and so father I thank you I thank you for putting your words in my mouth oh God and I thank you Lord God for cleaning me up God and I thank you for stripping stuff off me God that should never be on me God and I thank you today Lord of Ohio oh glory to God for opening up my eyes oh God and I thank you today Lord God oh glory to God causing me to see beyond myself oh God causing me to see what you want me to see causing me to understand oh God in the name of Jesus, oh glory to the most I thank you today, Lord God. I thank you today, Lord God. Oh God, you are holy. You are righteous. You are just. Oh God, I thank you, Shia. I thank you, Lord. 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 I thank you for this consecration. I thank you, Lord. How about Shia? Oh God, expose everything, God. Expose everything around me, God, that I can't see, God. Expose everything around me, God. Oh, God, I don't know see that I don't know nothing about God. Oh, God, expose, oh, God. I thank you for the seven-day consecration. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. 
because you're nothing to play with God. I thank you, Lord, because you are nothing to play with God. Oh, glory to God. I thank you for keeping me from sickness. I thank you for keeping me from diseases. I thank you for keeping me from infirmity, God. I thank you, Lord God, for keeping my family, oh God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you today, Lord God. My God, for thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, oh God. My God, for eating food that is not right, oh God, that we don't know nothing about, oh God. I thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God that you kept our minds today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God, we come to say thank you. We come to say thank you. I thank you today, Lord God. Oh, glory to God that you're killing the spirit of sabotage. I thank you today, Lord God, that you're killing it, oh, God, and I've all seen the lies, oh, God, the mischief, oh, God, the works of the flesh, oh, God, that you're killing it today, God, that we can be able to do what we need to do for you, God. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Lord, for smiling upon us. We thank you, Lord, for shining upon us in the name of Jesus. We thank you because it is so. We thank you because it is done. And, Father, we thank you for this consecration, that when we come out of this consecration, we will be better, Lord God. We will do better, Lord God. We will do what you've called us to do, God, without any question, oh God, without any double-mindedness, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, because it is so. We thank you that you chose us, oh God, for this seven-day consecration in the month of in the month of August, oh God, which is the eighth month, oh God. We thank you today, Lord, that ever higher. Yes, Lord. We thank you for revealing your mind to us, revealing your heart to us. We thank you, Lord, for causing us to hear, Lord, my God, in the secret places. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because it is so. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for keeping our children. We thank you for keeping our marriages. We thank you for keeping and mostly our ministries. We thank you today, Lord God. My God, that we're in the palm of your hands. We thank you, Lord, for remembering us, God. We thank you, Lord, for healing us from all past hurt, all past rejection, God. We thank you today, Lord God. We don't take it into this consecration. But, Father, we say burn it off of us. We say, God, that I'm she's tripping off of us, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, this is a new day. This is a new season. This is a new time, and have your way, God. We yet up on see surrender all, God. We yield ourselves to you, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way this day, Lord God. Shut what it needs to be shut. Open what needs to be open. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you for stirring us up, God. Thank you for stirring up the gifts in us, God. Thank you, Lord God, for revealing to us, God, what you called and chose us to be, God. We thank you, Lord. And it is so, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the word that is about to go forth. My God, we thank you, Lord, that you shall be glorified. Your name shall be glorified. We thank you for manifestation from your word. My God, signs and wonders and miracles shall be manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So, Father, as we begin to take the communion of God, we thank you today, Lord God, for this first day of consecration. Whatever's not right, oh God. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. For we take up the bread, which is representation of the body of Jesus Christ. His body was broken. And when his body was broken, we ask that you bless, Lord God. We ask that you bless us, oh God, as we take up communion <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. We eat of the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, because the word of God shall become flesh. So for that reason... We eat from the body of Jesus Christ. That he was broken. That we will walk in wholeness. We will walk in wholeness. Wholeness. Glory to God. We eat of the word of God. We obey the word of God. Because we eat of the body of Jesus Christ. And it shall become flesh. And it is so. Likewise the juice symbolic of the blood. 
the blood of Jesus, which is considered the new covenant, the new testament. And the blood is life, healing, deliverance, and breakthrough. As we drink of the blood, there's any sickness, any infirmity, any disease in our body that we don't know none of. Anything within our spirit that we don't know none of. We drink of the blood of Jesus. It is the blood that cleanses. It is the blood that purifies. It is the blood that brings forth life and life of that more abundantly. So we drink in Jesus' name. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. Glory to God. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. Hallelujah. Here, the worship time. Listen at this song for a second. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and invite. We are in our first day of consecration. We have six more days. Hear the words of the song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Good morning all around the world. We thank God for you, 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 and you. Yes, beloved, this is our weather forecast channel, and we are in our seven days of consecration. So we will, uh, by the next Wednesday, we will be off of the consecration, but we came on from 6 to 6.30 thanking God, just straight praying and thanking the Lord in English. At 12 midnight, it's called the midnight cry, and at midnight, all you're doing is speaking in your heavenly language. You're not um, saying, God, I need this. God, I need you to do this. We are speaking in our heavenly language. Surely you know, glory to God, before you even step up to the Father, and try to go into your heavenly language, there is a way you must present yourself to the Father. And so when you do start off in praying, you're asking God to forgive you. You're asking God to cleanse you. You're asking God to purge you and purify you and sanctify you. You're asking God to allow the blood of Jesus to cover you because the Bible lets us know uh, the blood is, is Jesus that the Lord needs to see. Jesus, the Lord our Father God needs to see because God can't look upon our flesh. He's not looking at us. And so if you in prayer and you have not um, asked the Father to cover you in the blood, then you are in offense because the Lord can't look upon your flesh. He has to look, amen, the blood of Jesus covers and what he sees is his son. And so for that reason, you begin to, uh, before you go into the holies of holy, you got to clean yourself. You got to purify yourself. You got to ask God to uproot and gut out every foul and corrupt and perverted and wicked and prideful thing that may be in your life, that may be in your spirit or maybe in your soul and so there's a way you enter into prayer and once you begin to uh, cleanse yourself and asking God to forgive you where you come short of his glory then you begin uh, to go into your heavenly language some of you all may not have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and if you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost then you don't have a heavenly language and a heavenly language means this it means that there's a conversation that is going on between your spirit and God your 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 your, your flesh cannot comprehend the conversation that is going on. Your, your flesh is literally out of the way of the conversation. And that conversation is between the Father and the Spirit that is in you. And so at 12 midnight, which was awesome to me and to everybody that joined in last night, because midnight started August the 1st, and everyone that uh, 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 went and... and um, had the music of the shofar blowing, amen. What a, what a powerful thing. When the shofar is blowing, there's many things that happens when you blow the shofar at different times. And because we're going into consecration, the shofar was blown uh, for that whole hour as I was praying. Glory to God. Letting the enemy know you're about to be destroyed. Glory to God. Why? Because I have to afflict something on my own body uh, to cause some things that I don't want, amen, uh, to to. To deny and it has to hurt and so you can't sit there and, and say you know what I'm gonna give up this and you know it don't even bother you you have to give up something that you know you can't live without look at y'all looking at Come me on, yeah. and some of this stuff is Facebook and your phones and and uh, TVs and things of that nature and so you have to give up something that's going to do what hurt your flesh you got to be you got to learn how to flick your own self Glory to God, because you don't learn how to afflict your own self. When the Lord begins to afflict us, you're going to act like you're going to die. You ain't saying nothing. Come on now. So you got to learn how to afflict your own self. Amen. And so Amen. that's what we're doing for the next six days. So midnight in the realm of the spirit. I want to see you in the spirit. Glory to God. Go ahead and go to YouTube or go to my my wall. There is a link of um, um, shofar, rain in the desert, shofar. And that shofar, you cannot get a uh, common with things. It. it is not something that you get traditionalized with it. Glory to God. You have to understand back in the biblical times, especially in the Old Testament, glory to his wonderful name, the shofar was blown at, blown at certain times because certain things was about to happen. Amen, somebody. And so I know that I'm on point. I know things, glory to God, is happening. And I know the consecration is at the right time and at the right season of my life. And the shofar is being blown. And the Lord knows what he's doing. And so I'm excited for this seven days of consecration to all those I'm getting ready to get into this world.
word, but I want to say one thing. This time last year, I was not here in Texas. I was in California, and I did a seven-day consecration in the month of August. You can go back into uh, uh, the YouTube and even go back into the memories that Facebook puts up, amen, and you can see that there was a word that God had given. I was in a seven days consecration. Everything I had need of in that season was taken care of. I mean, everything. Amen. Glory to God. I don't see. I did a transition moving from California to Texas. Uh, I, I did not struggle and paying nothing. I had money in the bank. I had money in my pocket. Everything was paid for. Even before I left to even come to uh, back to Texas, I already had the house. The house was already taken care of. And I was still in another house in California. It wasn't coming here and trying to uh, 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 pick up stuff and trying to get stuff. Everything was already set in position. This happened last year around about this time. Seven mm -hmm. days of consecration opened up something so awesome to me and my family. I didn't have to drive. I call her my girl, which is my car, Black 300. She didn't have to drive over the road. She was lifted and she was drove and no mileage came to her. My I whole family, we flew. Time. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. This was all caught up in the consecration. Glory to God. And God has met every need. Are you hearing me? And so when you hear the sound, amen, of the Lord saying it's time to consecrate. Glory to God. And as the Lord began to pick me up in the spirit quickly and immediately say it's time for you to consecrate. You're going into August. I need you to do a seven-day consecration. And surely I told the Lord, yes. When I told the Lord, yes, watch what happened. I told the Lord, yes. And Facebook Live repeated a teaching that I taught within the seven days of consecration. Y'all not not saying yeah. nothing on, and now. everything I needed glory to God and everything I have need of glory to God God has provided and so I won't miss a beat Hala Boshaya yes. he's going to do greater this seven days of consecration glory to God is causing something to be stripped off of your life it's causing some things to be removed from your life and as well as it's causing some things to be added to your life and so I say to you glory to God make sure that the Lord releases you to join us for these next six days of consecration. I know, glory to God, you could say, yes, I'm going on this consecration, but is it the will of God? Is it the timing of God for you to go on the consecration? I try to teach people, glory to God, just because something is good may not be the timing for you. And so you need to seek the face of God and ask God, is this your will for me to go on this uh, now six days of consecration with Apostle Vanessa Jackson and the Raw High Ministry uh, family in Irvin as well as Cyprus. And so if the Lord says yes to you by every means. Come on, join in. Glory to God. Again, Midnight Cry is from 12 midnight to 1 a.m., and that is straight um, you, in your heavenly language. From 6 a.m. to 6.30, you are praying, glory to God, and all you're doing is thanking the Lord. And if you don't know, well, what do you mean by thanking the Lord? When we go off of the air, amen, go ahead and play it again, and you will begin to hear that I was praying, and I was praying Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then uh, every day for the next seven, six days, there is a major book, that a book, not a scripture and not a chapter. The book you shall read every day. This day will be the Song of Solomon. And so don't just read it, but ask God to, to grace you to read it through his eyes. So this day will be the book of Song of Solomon. Also, there's something you will have to give up that's going to hurt you. Glory to God. You know what it is you feel that you can't live without you can't do without that's what it is you need to say god i'm giving this up for seven days and so it is what it is amen god has some things that he has uh uh, uh, uh provided for us and and put on reserve for us but let me tell you something you're not just gonna get it because you're shouting you're not gonna get it just because you're waving your hand you're not gonna get it because you're just running around the church and you're not gonna get it because you're just in the church glory to god there's just some things because Jesus made it Jesus made it plain. Some things only come out through fasting and praying. And when there's demonic spirits that have tried to latch on or trying to come in, those things, you're going to have to fast. You're going to have to learn how to go into consecration. And you're going to have to learn how to have a mirror and to look at yourself and say, I'm tired of you. Glory to God. And you have to learn how to say to yourself, you're going to die. Die. Why would I command myself to die? No, there's your flesh is alive and your flesh is 
is trying to lead and guide and tell you what to do and how to do and how to feel. And it's getting you all out of, out of wopsided, lopsided, all out of the will of God because of your flesh. And you're going to have to learn how to talk to your flesh. I'm tired of you. Glory to God. And I want to stay, amen, in the safety arms of Jesus Christ. And so for that reason, you cannot, amen, go with the rest of your life and not consecrate. You cannot go with the rest of your life and not fast. Glory to God. So you're going to have to, amen, learn how to go on, on consecrations yourself. You're going to have to learn how to know yourself, amen, and, and know when you're getting all out of whack. Come on, somebody. Glory amen. to God. And cause your own self to go on a fast or consecration because why? If not, it's not about people. It's about the pulling away from God. Are you hearing me? The Bible makes it plain. Then I'm going to this word that, that, that Samson played with God so much that one day, glory to God, when the Philistines was upon him, he began to try to shake himself and the anointing was no longer there and they overtook him. I'm telling you, you done played with the devil so long and played with him so much that you shook yourself. This time you're going to try to shake yourself and they're going to overtake you. And the Bible said the Philistines overtook uh, Samson. They took his eyes out. Why would they take his eyes out? That was symbolic. So he could not see. Y'all not saying nothing. Come Glory on. to God. And so when your eyes are gone in the rim of the spirit, you cannot see. All you can see is in the natural. And when you can see in the natural, wow. all you feel is whatever you're doing, it is right. When you cannot see in the realm of the spirit no longer, the Lord will not allow you to see through his eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. He will no longer, glory to God, you will no longer have a touch from the Lord. <clears throat> when your eyes because in Genesis <clears throat> the Bible said that when the Lord amen glory to God called judgment to hit Adam and Eve the first thing he took from them was their sight to see in the kingdom glory to God and so Samson tried to shake himself and that day the spirit of God did not get him out of that situation and he ended up being bound with the Philistines and when he came to himself hear ye me and the Holy Ghost when he came to himself glory to God the Bible said he said uh, 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 and, and strengthen me this one more time so I could be able to take out what I need. And the Bible said he took out what he need, but he never left there. Glory to God. He took out more at the end of his life than he took out while he was walking through. Y'all not saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Samson did not leave that place walking out of that place. Samson died in that. But yet God and Abos, he strengthened him the last time. Glory to God. I'm trying to tell somebody, you need to have consecration so you can stay in tune with God so you, you you can be focused on what God has for you. Glory to God and making sure that none of you, as Jesus said, when Satan come, he found none of him in him. Glory to God. And so there it is right there. If you want to join in, you're very welcome to join in. Please acknowledge the Lord and see if, if this is the timing of the Lord for you well we send hugs loves and kisses all around the world we are grateful that you have joined in that was our announcement don't forget we are headed to north carolina yes we are we are coming the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And so August the 10th, we are headed to North Carolina. On, uh, we are I constantly know, putting out the flyer. Amen. Go to my wall. Amen. And, and, and look at the flyer. Amen. Meet us there. Uh, glory to God because God has opened up that region to us and we're excited. Yeah. Amen. It's time for us to come into the region. Amen. And to do what God has called us to do. And so we're excited. We're going to fulfill our kingdom assignment because yeah. this is what come God has now. placed upon our life. But I am inviting you, you, you and you meet me next Friday yes next Friday one night next Friday glory to God glory to God the information is on my wall again I will keep posting it keep posting it some people are not getting my flyer not getting my information for whatever reason glory to God I'm saying to you we constantly got many things going on amen at the Raw High Ministry uh, Urban Campus as well as Cypress Campus and I'm saying to you amen if you're not seeing anything coming to you from a Apostle Vanessa Jackson, you need to go to my wall and check it out because we are on the move for God and we are constantly doing something. Also, Amen. the month of August, we are in the month of August and for the Raw High Ministry in Irvin, the month of August is called The Prophets Speak. Yes, The Prophets Speak. And Come so on, we're Pastor. excited for this month. Yes, God, God is going to bring because our house is an apostolic and a prophetic house and we're excited for what the Lord is doing. And so the Lord will be bringing prophets 
prophets and prophetess into our house, amen, to speak a word. Glory to God, amen. And so amen. we're excited, and that is called the Prophets Speak the month of August, and I'm excited for the lineup. Come on! That God has put together. And then in September, yes, September, it will be the prophet speaks in Cyprus. Amen, somebody. Amen. And we're excited for that. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a little twist. Amen. In Cyprus. And so instead of having our morning service in Cyprus at 830, we're going to make a twist and we're going to make it at 730 because we want everybody to be able to come to hear what the prophets will have to say. Glory to God at that particular month in the month of September. So again, we have many things going on. We're about to do our back to school bash, okay. amen, which is given into the community for the children that is going back to school. If you would like to be a part of that again, why don't you inbox me and say, what can I do? What can I uh, donate or what can I sow, amen, to give a child, amen, something to go back to school and let them know you will have the, the, the products that you need to go back to school. We're going to make sure, amen, we're not the only ministry that is doing it, but guess what? If your ministry is not doing anything for the community and you want to do something, go ahead. Inbox me and say, Apostle Jackson, what can I do? Amen. To get on this back to school bash. Amen. Backpack. And we're excited for what the Lord is doing. Well, that's all my announcements. We have prayed. Amen. For 30 minutes. Now it's time for the word of God. Amen. 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 You can't stop the season of change. The Lord began to tell me, uh, to some of you all, you may have seen uh, the clipping from Sunday where the Lord began to deal with us regarding this uh, preaching and teaching. You can't stop change. And he said, go ahead and throw the word season in there. You can't stop the season of change. So if you have not, amen, took the time to go over to our wall, you know we do have a raw high page ministry. Have you checked that out lately? Yes, we have a possible Nessa Jackson page and we have a raw high ministry page. And there are many things that is from the ministry of raw high urban and Cypress is on that page. And we would love for you to go glory to God and check out that page. But however, but if you have not watched the clip from Sunday, the Lord said, I want you to bring it to the people on Wednesday. You cannot stop <laughs> the season of change. Yes, glory to God. You cannot stop the season of change. When I look at this word, stop, watch what it means. It means cease to happen. You can't cease to happen what God is going to do. You can't, you, you, you can't forfeit it. You can't uh, 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 try to sabotage. You can't try to damage it. You can't try to make uh, things not work together for someone's good. Amen. When the season have changed, you can't stop Amen. nothing because whatever God has for glory to God at purpose for somebody is still going to happen. Not because you're in disobedience. Please hear ye me in the Holy Ghost. God is not in the business blessing us and we in straight up disobedience. Y'all not saying nothing. Come on in somebody. On, yeah. You and I must walk in the spirit of obedience yes, in God. every area of our life. Glory to God. That's why you got to learn how every day to search yourself. The Bible said, examine yourself and to see if you be in the faith, because you may not be in the faith. Yes, you God. can say, I have faith, but that doesn't mean you're in the faith. Are you hearing That's me? It. To That's be it. in the faith means, glory to God, you're pleasing God because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So to be in faith means you need to please God, and That's God is not it. pleased with us when we in straight disobedience of what he's telling us to do, what he's, he's telling us what we can and cannot do. And so, glory Glory to his wonderful name, the seasons. Come on here. Glory to God. Can You can't stop the season. Are you hearing Come me? On, if you think you jealous and mad about what God is doing for me right now, you about to get really upset. Glory to God. Because if Tell you see him what God is doing now and you having a fit, come on here and you think I'm, I, I don't deserve it, you about to be really upset because you can't stop change. Stop means to cease cease from happening. You can't stop it from happening because once someone, amen, locks themselves up with the Lord, amen, grabs a hold to the horns of the altar between the porch and the altar and start crying out to God and saying, God, I need you to change me. God, I need you to deliver me. God, I need you to heal me. God, I need you to set me free. Come God, I need to be closer to you. God, I need to hear you. Glory to God, more than I hear and what my flesh is trying to tell me I need. I 
I need to hear you. All I want is you. You got to understand, no one can stop the season of change. And I'm so excited. It don't matter. Glory to God. If he's tried to stop people from coming to the ministry, tried to stop people from hearing the word of God through, glory to God, the mouthpiece right here. You can't stop the season of change. Glory to God. And so that word stop means to cease to happen. When I begin to look at the word season, the word season means, and spiritual season means it can and will look and feel different. It can and will look and feel different. And so for that reason, you're going to have to have discernment. Because if you don't have discernment in the realm of the spirit, what looks and what feels different, you would think, glory to God, the things that is happening, glory to God, is causing you, amen, to be uh, 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 rejected or misunderstood. But when seasons change, hold, hold on real quick. I got something to tell you. I got something to show you. And so spiritual seasons can and will look and feel different as we move from one spiritual season to the next staying connected to God in each season is crucial this will allow for our best growth this will allow for our best growth and helps us to produce the best fruit see God is after fruit from our life is anybody listening? Yeah, Did everybody go home in the book of Galatians? It lets you know. Well, then what is the fruit of the spirit? Not fruits. What is the fruit of the spirit? Right. And then it will begin to tell you. So God is looking for fruit. Glory to God. He's looking for long suffering when it needs to be long suffering. Are you throwing in the towel? Are you saying you're trying to give up? You got to have long suffering. Glory to God. Is it time in your life and you need to have what? Temperance. Self-temperance. God is not going to come to control yourself. You got to learn how to control ah, yourself. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory it says about a, a, a faith and, and, and different things of that nature. So when do you need to have faith? And what time do you need to have faith? God is looking for fruit from our lives. Are you hearing me? Yes, glory to God. I shot now meekness. Glory to God. Meekness means, glory to God, you got to learn how to be quiet. And God is looking at the time that you need to learn how to be quiet. Amen. You still talking. So for that reason, watch this, where the fruit of meekness needs to show up, it don't. And so God is looking for fruit. In our life, you can begin to read the scripture and quote the scripture and still don't know how it works. I'm trying to teach you in that big that big two seconds that I just did how it works. Are you hearing me? You don't you don't need faith all the time, but the time you need faith, God is looking for that fruit. The time you need meekness is the time God is looking for that fruit. Is anybody yes. listening? Did everybody yes. go home? And so for that reason, how many times have you failed the fruit test? Wow. How many times have you failed the fruit test? Because the ins- inspection that Jesus is going to come and inspect is the fruit inspection. Ah, oh, glory to God. That's some good stuff right there. Wow. The fruit inspection. Are you hearing me? And so, glory to God, if you're not walking in discernment and you don't discern what should be, amen, right here at that particular time of your life, then the fruit that the Lord is looking for, you won't have it, okay? You want, want me to go to scripture? I'm so glad you, you're you asking me to go. Here I go. When Jesus was walking, amen, with his disciples, Jesus was hungry. Jesus saw a tree, a tree. We are like trees. We are like trees. We are like trees. We are are like trees supposed to be planted by the rivers of living water. This is this is extra right here because I'm talking about season. So the Bible said Jesus was hungry. In front of Jesus on his path was a tree. This tree had a leaf or leaves on it. And if it had leaves on it, then it's supposed to have fruit on it. Because you don't have leaves on it if it's not protecting anything. So right. when Jesus saw the leaves on the tree, he knew that this tree should have what? Fruit on it. When Jesus began to pull the leaf back, glory to God, there was no fruit. That was an imposter tree. Looked like it was a tree that was bearing fruit. And at the time that Jesus wanted to eat from it, from our lives, we was not bearing the fruit. The Bible says Jesus didn't stop and have crumb cakes and tea with the tree. Jesus turned around and cursed the tree and said, you will not produce anymore because you was fake. You was phony. You was trying to make it look like you had some and you know you didn't have none. Why? Because Jesus was hungry and he came to do what? 
fruit inspection. And so you better be careful when it's time for Jesus to come to your life and amen and do a fruit inspection and there is no fruit but yet you look like you got leaves to protect something God has given you but yet you have nothing. And the Bible said he cursed the tree and told glory to God, hallelujah this tree you will no longer produce again. And the what? The disciples heard what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. By the time they came back the next day, it didn't take no 24 hours. The time that Jesus spoke, you will bear no more fruit. Glory to God. And when they came back, glory to God, the disciples remembered what Jesus said and they were at all of the tree that he spoke you shall no longer produce because what? You pretended you had something that you didn't. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I got to stop pretending because when Jesus, see it's about Jesus and not about people. When Jesus Jesus come to do fruit inspection. What fruit should you be what? Having manifested at that particular time. Is anybody That's listening? Yes, and so you can't stop the season of change. What does the word change mean? It means to make or to become different. Glory to God. Every season that changes in your life, you are to become different and you are to become better. You're not supposed to uh, uh, be diversing or going backwards. Come on, somebody. A change has come and a change is to do what? To make you better. A change right. is to make you different and different where you can be glory to God. You could be, watch this, known by somebody and somebody be wild. W-O-W-E-D of about your change. Uh, glory to God. And so for that reason, change means, again, make or to become different. To exchange one thing for another. And so if there is change going on, there if there's change going on, there is exchange going on. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And so you can't stop the season of change. A lot of us sitting on here, a lot of us that's in here, we fight against change because we get so comfortable in our own way of thinking, our own way of doing something, or our own way of what used to be done, that we don't like the change. We don't want to get to understand the change. Well, let me go like this. Uh huh. I feel like preaching and teaching well, no, because when there are new technology that has came on the scene, a lot of us because we're not we're not technology savvy, we won't go that way because we don't like change. Because with new technology means I got to learn something different. I got to drop my old thinking. I got to drop what I was taught uh, yesterday and come into new thinking and a and, and, and new way of doing something because new gadgets is on this different new technology equipment or product. And some of us don't like change because now it causes us to get up off our do nothing and begin to do something. A lot of us have got into this comfort zone and said, I'm okay. I got enough of God to make it through my life. But if Come our God now. who we are serving is forever, what? Changing. Amen. How is it that we that is with the Lord, walking with him, come on, y'all not saying nothing, and Amen. think we gonna stay with him and don't wanna change. Y'all not true. saying nothing. We don't like change. We fight against change instead of getting understanding about change. Change means, come on, y'all not saying nothing, that someone can look at you and say, is that Vanessa? Is that Nissa? Oh my God, look at her. Why? Because it's not about them accepting the change that they see on me. It was me that accepted the change and I did the necessary adjustments that I can do what? That I can come into what? The frame of the change. Y'all not saying nothing and now other people, glory to God, will be at all of the change. You don't change for people, you change for God and when you change for God, glory to God, the people be will the people will have the allness of what? Of your change. That's but it. you can't fight against change. Change, y'all not saying nothing. If they dare to sit in my face up here, glory to God, in this reading room and have on what they had on yesterday and do not change, then there's something wrong upstairs locally. Got it? You understand? It? Because today is what? A different day and you should have what? Change your clothes. You see that? Y'all not saying nothing.
not the, sometimes you have to bring it down to simplicity so we can get the understanding. Yes. There's so many people in the body of Christ that is fighting against change. You can't stay the same. It would be crazy for me to have a, a female uh, um, older face and a body of a baby. What would you call that look? Deformed, cray cray. Is this really real? She has a face of a human female, of an older he human female, but her body did not change with her face. Y'all not saying nothing. I'm trying to break it down as the best that I can. Because if you're going to be with God, if you're going to walk with God, my God, you're going to have to accept change. Are you hearing me? You cannot prophesy the way you used to prophesy. The Holy Ghost will give you another way to prophesy. Why? Because the people in the pews are what? Different. Glory to God. I, I said this the other day. I believe I said it yesterday. There's a change that happened when I was young, we could leave our doors open. We could go to sleep and our doors unlocked. We didn't get up the next morning and say, oh my God, Lord, I thank you for coming my house. That's not what we said when I was young. Glory to God, we just got up and fixed breakfast, put our clothes on and went on out the door. Are you hearing me? Why? Because at that particular time, we can do that. But 2018, you need 50 bars. Y'all not saying nothing. 20 cats, 25 dogs. Y'all not saying nothing. You need llamas. You need giraffe. Y'all ain't saying now you get it? I'm just trying to bring clarity. You may laugh with it, and it's all good in the hood, but I'm trying to bring clarity. When you didn't need no bars on the door, you didn't need no dogs barking, you didn't need no cats scratching, amen, back then. Today, you need that and some more. You need a horse that, are oh, you hearing me? You need the pigs, amen, oinking. You need the cow. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need all this extra what? Security. Yeah, because of what? Change. So either you are going to do what? Accept the change and take the necessary adjustments so you can live in this 2018 called world or you can act crazy in 2018 and still try to live in 1990-something. Right. Are y'all getting this? Come on, so guess what? We couldn't stop the change. The change. Yes. We couldn't stop the change. Are you hearing me? We had to put bars on our window. We had to put a, a big sign in the middle of the front yard and say, don't try it. There's a security alarm in this house. We didn't have to have that so yes, many years yes, ago. And yes. guess what? We didn't pick up from America and go over to another country. Guess what? We stayed right in America and change was doing what? Change was still happening. Either you're going to adapt to the change or you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, that was good. That's the rules. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. And so, uh, watch this. Uh, I was sitting in my bedroom. Again, you could go and see this part of this clipping. I was sitting in my bedroom. I was watching TV. There's a window in my bedroom. And all of a sudden, I stopped looking at the TV. And I looked to the left out of my uh, out of my window. And there was a tree, uh, many trees across the street in different uh, yards of my neighbor. But this particular tree was in front of my house. And I'm looking at this tree. And the trees are green. Are you hearing me? And, and the bushes and things of that nature are very green, which Come is letting on, us know uh, that we're in uh, the, uh, the season of summer and everything is supposed to do what? It is supposed to bloom. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm looking at the tree. And as I'm looking at the tree and seeing that the tree is green, uh, it's got its green leaves, it's really green, it's really flourished, uh, it's, it has blossomed. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, now look to the ground. So when I look down, at the ground, there were leaves on the ground. Well, the leaves that was on the ground had turned brown. But yet and still, the tree that I'm looking at don't have any type of uh, any type of sign that, watch this, change has come. Oh, that was good. Glory to God. But I didn't see the change until I looked down and the Lord began to speak to me and say, daughter, I've already caused change to happen to the season. And while everybody will look at the trees and look at the bushes and look at all the greenery that is still going on, change still is happening. You cannot stop the season of change. Now watch this. Some of us will get upset and say, my God, I don't understand. Nobody is tripping about the change. What is happening is you must adapt to the new season. 
adapting to the new season doesn't change the fact that God is going to bless you again. Doesn't stop, doesn't uh, affect a man. The change is not going to affect that you're not going to have a new harvest. But if you don't understand that even though the tree at the top had the green leaves on it and it don't even look like change came. But when I looked at the ground and saw the leaves that fell to the ground, y'all not saying nothing, the ones that fell to the ground, the leaf colors has already did what? Already changed. Well, I'm not going to sit there and start crying and say, okay, there goes something. There it is. We're right over. No, what God is saying to me, daughter, you can't stop the change. So you might as well go ahead and know that change has already happened before other people know what happened and go ahead and adapt to the change. When you adapt to the change, the harvest that you have been walking in now is going to shift to better. But if you sit there and begin to fight against the change because you and I are acting like, my God, we in the flow right now. So if we about to do a shift of change, that means I got to go back to the bottom. Well, that's you. I'm not, I don't have to go back to the bottom. How can you say that Apostle Jackson? Because that tree out there is not going to the bottom. That tree is going to be covered for the next season and still be producing inside itself. It still has nutrients inside itself. Are you hearing me? It is still doing what? Being activated as a tree. Y'all not saying nothing. It is still doing what it needs to do even in when it looked like seasons have changed and it looked like, my God, it has came up against that tree because the tree is not doing what? It don't look green. But if it don't look green, then we should do what? We should cut it down. But you don't have to cut down a tree because it's still in what operation, even though the what the seasons have changed. But if you don't understand about the change of the season, you can tell when change has come. You can tell when your change and your and your weight has either went up or went down. Are you hearing me? It don't look like it until you do what? Till you put some clothes on. Are you hearing me? And either glory to God, if the weight went down, then you look and say, Oh, I'm gonna have to give me some new pants. If your weight went up, you're gonna say, Oh, I can't fit these no more. Y'all not saying nothing. So you can't stop change. So the tree is still, amen, functioning as a productive tree. But well, how is that apostle? It's not being green, but it still has nutrients to be alive. Yeah. It is still, keep Shanda, it still has the right things to keep standing. The tree has come to accept the change because you can't stop the change. So the tree wasn't, amen, picking up and say, you know what? We headed to Florida. The tree didn't pick up to say, you know what? We headed to California. The tree didn't say that. The tree adapted. Come on. While everybody's looking at the outer appearance of the tree, the tree has already started adapting to the change. Glory to God. Y'all not saying that. The tree is not fighting the change. Are you hearing me? The tree realized I'm still going to be producing. I may not be producing for your eyesight, but I'm still going to be producing. I'm going to still be producing because I'm still going to be standing. And when the next time that the leaves of the harvest begin to manifest, I'm still going to be standing right here. And the watch this, the manifestation of what? The harvest is going to be seen by people. The harvest don't just start because you see it. The harvest started when the change began to happen. And because I didn't fight change and I just began to submit to the change, y'all not saying nothing. Glory to God, don't you know? No, the Holy Ghost is talking. Yeah. Don't you know when people are time for people to go into the service, whether it's Navy, Army, Marines, or, or Air Force, they have to do what? They have to accept the change. Yeah. They're not going to go up in there and fight against the change. Say, you ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy. Don't be all up in my face pointing your finger. No, they had to adapt to that. Y'all not saying that. They knew because why they were in boot camp. And because they was in boot camp, they were being trained that when they get on the real field. And so they they weren't fighting against it. And guess what? Y'all not saying nothing. And guess what? Though they left their mama and their daddy and went into service, they still was being taken care of. Even though change has happened, they adapted to the change. In other words, in their mind, they're saying, you know what? I got to go through this season, but I'm still being taken care of. I'm still being fed. I'm still being clothed. I still have a, 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 a shelter over my head. I still can be able to rest when it's time for us to rest. 
They adapted to the change. And where I wasn't being hollered at, now I'm being hollered at. They not tripping. Why? Because some people that have went into the service already got their eyes on being a sergeant. And you can't become a sergeant if you don't know, amen, what it is to start at what ground level and then begin to accept the changes that will happen. You got to, my God from Zion, you got to experience the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you ain't packing bags and trying to run because if you do that, it's called AWOL. And if you're AWOL, guess what? They sending their police after you. And so why you think, glory to God, you at Walmart shopping and you shop because you want to, there's people looking for you. You ain't saying nothing because you AWOL and left the change. And I didn't say coin change. Because why? You couldn't handle the change. And you couldn't handle them telling you, you can't do this. You can't do that. Do this. Straighten that bed up again. And you saying it is straightened up. No, it's not. And you looking like that bed is straightened up. And they literally telling you, no, it's not. So if you're going to accept the change, you got to accept and say, okay, the bed look made up to me, but in the eyesight of somebody else, it may not be made up. And I have to realize they getting me ready for the real field. And I can't be on the real field and say, ain't no devil out there. Glory to God. And they say, it is a devil. It is an opponent out there. Get it? Oh, and because man. you can't see the opponent, you know, he's out there. And guess what? You're going to what? Be ready. Yes, ma'am. You can't fight against change. Against change. The tree is still being taken care of. The tree is still standing. The tree, glory to God, what is happening is it is it is causing now what used to be seen on the outer perimeter. Things are now working for you on the inside. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, but if you don't understand, you have to adapt to change. Yes, Are you listening? I'm when you listening. adapt to change, you got to follow the new instructions. Even if you don't understand it, you still got to do what? Follow it because it's going to do what? Work together for your good. And watch this. Because when people start talking about change, some of us cringe. Mm -hmm. cringe because they don't understand why would I cringe when my harvest that I'm in when the, he said I'm going to I'm gonna put you on the land that's going to do what flow with milk and honey when you look at the word of God once the children of Israel after God did his thing he had to kill off some people he had to wait until those that did not know anything about him grow up and then Joshua had to circumcise them on the eighth day I'm getting ready to run around this place we are being circumcised you are you me. hearing me they had had to be circumcised, which means, watch this, I'm going to pour this water on y'all, which means they had to take the foreskin of a part of the body and they had to cut it. Y'all not saying nothing. The problem is when change comes, you don't like the cut. <laughs> Glory to God from Zion. What's happening is you being cut, but you don't understand the change. In order for you to shift into the new change, you got to be cut. You got to be circumcised. This is the eighth month. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here, but it's going to be all right. You can, you can either accept the circumcised or you can fight the circumcised. And just because you fight the circumcised, it's not going to stop. What's going to happen is you're going to get circumcised. You're going to get cut, but you're going to make it worse. That's it. Are you hearing me? Yes. That's why, glory to God, I don't know about y'all, but I got three boys. Are you hearing me? And guess what? Each three boys had to be what? Circumcised. I'm so glad they were circumcised when they was a baby. Some people do not circumcise their sons when they're first born. They got to bring them back, glory to God, when they uh, maybe what, a year old or sometime, oh, you know, maybe three years old. However, don't you know that hurts? It hurts no matter what. But when you are three years old, you are one years old. My God, from Zion, you screaming, trying to run. You coming against what change? You got to be circumcised. So while you sitting there tripping about the change and don't realize in order for you to get the harvest you in, you didn't even understand that you had to get circumcised for that new change. So I'm not sitting here tripping and fighting change. I realize I'm on a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And the children of Israel, once those that was uh, came of age and was eight years old, they got circumcised. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. They got Amen. circumcised. And when you begin to read from Joshua all the way. Glory to God. When it was time for Joshua and them to come off scene, and glory to God, you did not see, amen, where they had to go back and start over again. Now, those who was acting a plum fool, they just fell off. But those that will walk with God and keep walking with God, God didn't start them over from the beginning. What happens is they came into their harvest. They know they was about to do what? Come into another change. They couldn't stop change. They had to get circumcised again to for the greater, for a greater manifestation 
of the harvest. Y'all tripping. Glory to God. God is flowing in my life. God is doing great things. And now I know what time it is, what season it is. Come on here. I can't stop the change. And it don't matter what people are saying on the outside. I, we don't like her. We don't want to hear from her. We don't want to get her. It don't matter. You can't stop change. You can't stop. Watch this. The circumcision. God is going to circumcise me. Come on. Cut on me. Glory to God to prepare me for my new harvest. You can't stop. You better come on. The change. change. Hello. So don't try to fight it. Okay, so the tree is still there. Are you hearing me? But the tree already showed manifestation that change has came to it. It may not be where the eyesight of people can see, but if you look with discernment, so you'll miss your change. You'll be fighting in your season of change. Right. You can say transition. You can say however you want, boo. It's still equal to change. Right. And you can't right. stop it. If you on level one in your job and they have level five, you trying to get to level five. Well, boo, you not going to jump from level one to level five. Why? If they put you in level five and you don't understand two, three, and four, you going to mess up at level five. Why? Because you have to, amen, go through the changes. And you, because these folks is crazy up here. They don't know what they want. No, what's happening is you sitting here not having discernment that you're in change and you are fighting against the change you think is them but reality is is you that's tripping because it's changing around you because you're changing but instead of you accepting the change you're trying to stop the change Come on now. and you want everything to do what stay the same what well, things can't stay the same because again like i first stated 2018 we got bars we got dogs we got cats y'all get it yeah. yeah so you either do what <laughs> Ooh, God, I love you. Accept the change, let it happen, or fight the change and die. What you say now? And that's all it is. So now let's go to Job 14, 14. Job 14, 14. It is what it is. Accept the change. I'm in a flow with the Lord. I'm in a harvest. And guess what? Listen, you can't stop the change. You may not want me to be promoted. You may not want me, glory to God, to be connected with prophetess Dr. Juanita Biden because you probably always be talking about there she go. Thank she something. I don't think I'm nothing. Glory to God because what's happening is I've been circumcised. I've been afflicted for the change. And in order to get greater in my life and in order to be greater and have have more people get saved from, from brought, Christ. I got to glory to God. Accept the change. All that comes with the change. And you that thinking completed. that you're going to be depleted. I'm trying to slap you upside your head in the name of the Lord. Glory to God that you're not going to be depleted. How is it that when the prophet came to the woman, glory to God, and all she had was a little meal. Awesome. She was not trying to accept the change. She was trying to hold on to her little one little meal. And he was saying, boo, accept the change. If you don't accept the change, you going to eat what's in your hand and you're not going to get none greater. You got to accept the change and break off some and give the prophets up. She was trying not to accept the change. But the, guess what? Change still happened. She didn't call for it, but change still came to her house. Y'all not saying that. The Lord called for the family. Y'all not saying that. But even though the Lord called for the family, the Lord had already picked out a family who that would protect the prophet? Y'all sitting up here on yes! the other. Apostle. They don't even get it. I just said damn, something. Damn. Raw hide. Y'all better get it. See, while the famine was going on, God had already chose a family to protect the prophet. And if the family was going to protect the prophet in the famine, the family was going to get the get a blessing or a promise. Y'all not saying nothing. But she, who is she? This widow woman, glory to God, was trying to do what? Fight the change. He said, you either give me a piece of that bread. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the meal bearer can what? Keep going. Keep going Keep or going. you eat the and change that. in your mouth and that's all you're going to have. Coach, Are y'all getting this? Yes, yes, yes. God sent me to preserve you yes. while you preserving me. Right. But if you don't accept the change, change. and you fight against the Change. Then you're going to die, boo, like the rest of them. But he sent me specifically to your house in the time of drought, in the time of where it looked like you ain't going to get no more. 
Miko Shaya. Y'all not saying nothing to us, sister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you can't sit there and try to damage the mouthpiece. Hello. When the Lord sent the mouthpiece so he you could be preserved in the change. And that you could go to what? Greatness. As a, as prophet as Biden was spoke about last night. Hallelujah. With greatness come what? Change. And if you don't accept the change, then you're not coming into greatness. And if you don't know how greatness comes about, <laughs> you still won't make it. Because you got to have what? Change. I know I'm in a flow with the Lord. I know the Lord is a blessing. And now the Lord is saying what? You're going to have to accept the change. I do not get fretful of the change. I realize I'm going to get circumcised. I'm getting ready to get cut because I'm getting ready to bring forth greater. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all getting it? Yeah, so Job chapter 14 and verse 14 says, if a man die, shall he live again? Question mark. And, and Job said, all the days of my life, wait a minute, let's see, all the days of my appointed, mm -hmm. see, our life have been appointed, which means you have a time to come to the world and you have a time that you're going to check out. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And if we don't understand that, he said, all the appointed time, all the days of, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change comes? He was going through. Are you hearing me? But guess what? You don't have to go through. <laughs> oh, God, I love you. Hallelujah. But he said, listen, I was appointed to go through this. Are you hearing me? There's a point that I had to what? Go through it. And there's a point that I had to what? Come out of it. But all in the midst of it, I'm going to wait till my what? Change. My change come, which make or to become different. Are you hearing me? Which means if God came into Job's life and Job was flourishing, y'all not saying nothing. Job had a family. He could eat whatever he wanted to eat. He could fly on his, his private jet and go anywhere he wanted to go. He could go to uh, uh, Gucci and Lucci and Neiman Marcus and all the rest. Got it? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. He could go ahead if he wanted to go to the store and buy his food. Or he could call Uber. Y'all not saying nothing. Call somebody to go and shop for him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He could do because why? He was flourishing. Y'all not right. saying nothing. But right. the Lord was what? Ready for what? Change for him. The Lord wasn't trying to kill Job. He was trying to bring him into more. Are you hearing me? Job did not go and start over from the bottom. Read Job 42. Yeah. Read Job chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then slip over and read Job 42. Job got everything back and greater. So Job didn't lose anything when it was time for change. Y'all not saying that. And you trying to act like change me. I'm going to lose everything I got. I worked hard for this right here. I'm not finna allow. See how you fighting change? Yeah. When you don't even really know that change come to cause you to walk in more. Change come to have you to have in more prosperity, prosperity of the word of God, prosperity of the wealth of God. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Tell your neighbor, you can't stop you can't the season, stop. Of change. season of change. And it's here. And the problem is you being circumcised and you fighting the cut that you just got. Ouch. No cut, no change, no Ouch. new harvest. Yeah. Say it again, we'll do. No yeah, cut, yeah, yeah. no change, no new harvest. You in a great harvest. Yes, you is, boo. But God got something greater for you. Yeah. And you trying to stay in this same old change yeah. that you had to change to to even get into. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you can't get too big for your own britches. Yeah, you and y'all yeah. um, know who used to say that. Yeah. Grandma, great-grandma. Yeah. <laughs> the mother said, they, we ain't saying that. Hallelujah. But our grandmothers and our great grandmothers said, You getting too big for your own britches. In other words, sure you have not, amen, uh, uh, filled the britches, but you're trying to act like you have, like you've grown. You're trying to change and, and uh, make the change, and you ain't ready for the change. But when the change comes, ah! you're still trying to fight the change. No, baby, don't fight the change. Look at what you have. Y'all not, y'all, I ain't got my mic, but I got some water. Amen, somebody. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Is anybody home? Did everybody leave a sister? Oh, you here. got to understand what you have in your hand cannot get you, glory to God, further. So what God is going to do, he's going to cause the seasons to change. But if you don't understand, he's trying to get greater in your hand. Yeah. He's trying to get you to walk in a great depth of wisdom. 
Are you hearing me? A great depth of knowledge. Are you listening? Glory to God. And with God, guess what he does? He's going to tell you. I'm going to test you like I test Job. Glory to God. Give me your son. <laughs> Give me that promise. Uh, come on here. And guess what? Job didn't, I'm sorry, Abram did not fight against chain. He said, the Lord, you gave it to me, so I don't have a problem in giving it back to you. If you want it, here you go. So whatever you want, I'm not, I don't have a problem in giving it back to you. Are you hearing me? He didn't fight against chains. So when he was up on the mountain and getting ready to do what? Slay his only son that God promised him. The Lord said, stay your hand. The change has already happened, but this I know. You won't hold nothing from me. If I tell you to give this up, if I tell you to walk away from that, if I tell you to stop doing this, you won't fight change. Y'all not saying nothing. So I know, glory to God, I have your heart. I know you connected to me. Is anybody listening? Yes. But we don't understand that change has already happened. God used the scenario of a tree. Are you listening? And while everybody's still trying to get their flip-flops on and keep and trying to wear their best sundress, are you hearing me? Okay. Glory to God. No one is seeing in the realm of the spirit or discerning that change has already taken place. Are you listening? Yes. So though you can still be wearing uh, the outer garments that connected to the summer season, you still are making what? The necessary changes for your new harvest. That's it. That's so it. the flow won't stop. Wow. Come on here. So there's a point in time. There's a point in time for everything. But you and I can't stop the season of change. Psalm 75, watch this. Psalm 75. Psalm 75 and verse 7 says it like this. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. See, you can't stop change. God is constantly what? Bringing down and setting up. So the thing of the matter is, I need to do what? Get with the change and not be like that woman that only had a little in her hand and nothing was going to be produced anymore from that. But yet God had already did what caused change to take place. So if God is going to do a set down one and bring up another, where you at in the equation? I'm asking a question. Where are you at in the equation? If God is in the business of setting up and bringing down, where are you at in the equation? I pray that you say, I'm being set up. up. I'm being brought up to yeah. that place. Why? Yeah. Because I'm what? Accepting the change because can't nobody stop the change. You can't stop me from going to my promotion. You can't stop me, glory to God, amen, for being honored by God. You can't stop. Come on. You can't stop the blessing. But you got to understand, how can one stop the blessing if I fight against the change? If I'm trying to stay in this harvest, harvest comes and goes, people. Y'all not saying it. Harvest comes and goes. You Are you listening? And the problem is, because we're already in a harvest, we think that this harvest is going to stay just like this. No, you're going to need what? Another harvest. harvest. But in order to get the other harvest, you're going to have to do what? Accept the change. And you have to accept the season of change before the change in the natural has actually already happened. Wow. Are you getting that? Yes. I use also the scenario on Sunday. I use, amen, the sports arena. You have football, you have basketball, and you have baseball. When football starts, y'all not saying nothing. Everybody has their own uh, team that they have chosen. And so everybody is raw raw and raw raw and all that good stuff. And believing that their team is going to go to the Super Bowl. Y'all not saying nothing. Well, they're not waiting. Who's not waiting? Uh, the sports people are not waiting for the Super Bowl right. to start basketball. That's it. Basketball, come on, y'all, is started even when... Football is still being played. That's true. So, which means, Sykes, that the season 
have changed even though we're still looking at football. Y'all not saying nothing. The Lord does not wait until a harvest has totally been completed. Because if that be the case, then the woman that had the meal of the meal of the handful of meal in that barrel, she won't gonna be able to make it because she had already told the prophet, I just got enough for me and my son, and that's it. There's nothing else coming behind this. But the way the Father, our God, works is he don't wait to get low to shift you. <laughs> Glory to God from Zion. Nobody has said nothing to me, Lord. He doesn't wait till you get to the end and then begin to shift. No, if you don't have discernment, come on here, and you start tripping, hello, life. I just gave $100 over here, and I just did this. I just gave food over here, and I just ran to the church and did this over here, and they still asking me what you're not discerning is. You think you're still right here in this harvest when God has already shifted you to your next harvest so you'll wow. never see an end or a depletion Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is anybody listening? Thank you, Lord and so for that reason, when basketball you, starts, you, you don't Lord see Jesus. the football uh, football fans tripping. No. Because you have the football fans that like football, and you have some football fans that like basketball. Nobody is tripping. I don't know why they brought out the basketball That's already. I'm true. trying to fulfill my football. Then they should bring it out. No, because then it's going to be a what? A breakage. Are you hearing yeah. me? But when the football is playing... And all of a sudden, just like a tag team, glory to God, running a race. Y'all not saying yeah. nothing. You don't get the baton standing there. You get the baton I in see. the midst of running. That person is running, glory to God, uh, uh, behind you. You got to already do what? Take, Take off to off. run. So the change ain't coming because you're standing still. The change is coming because you're moving. Wow. Come Are you on. hearing me? And the person that is uh, that they're standing there said, well, come on, because I'm not moving till you put it in my hand. Well, guess what? They're going to lose the race. Right. So do you want to lose the race or do you want to win? I you can't win. stop. The change. So nobody is tripping about basketball season, leaving out of football, coming in back. Basketball has already started before you get, glory to God, to the to, to what you call that thing at the end uh, to, that they the play. Uh, uh, when they begin to play the, the total football at the end, the two oh, teams, oh, Super Bowl. the Super Bowl, the Super nobody Bowl. is tripping. They said, come on here. They rah, rah, rah for their team. All of a sudden, they said, whoop. Then they turn into the other t the other channel because basketball is already <laughs> going. And when, the, when they're done and you find out who won the season for football, you are you are, you are, you screaming and you're hollering, or you saying something crazy because your team then lost. But guess what you said? Oh well, the the basketball is playing. It been playing. It didn't just start because the season of football was over. It started even in the midst at, in the midst of football. Are y'all getting this? Yes. You can't stop change. Do you think the baseball players are sitting over there and saying, I'll be glad when the basketball season is over so we can have our time? No, that's not how that happened. While the basketball teams are playing, glory to God, and they're about to get ready to go into their, 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 their competition, then baseball is starting, glory to God, in the midst when basketball is playing. They're saying batter up. Y'all not saying nothing. While they shooting, amen, three-pointers, layup, Duncan, hallelujah, the baseball players are saying, batter up. Y'all not saying that, but it's only the body of Christ that's not getting. That's you true. cannot stop the chain. That's God true. is not going to allow stuff to just dry up and you just sitting there waiting on the boat to come and get you and to take you across the way and to start it. Y'all not saying that. No, the Lord is trying to get us to the place. Oh. The tree was flourishing, but he said, now look with discernment because change has already took place with this tree. I cannot wait to all these leaves fall off of this tree. I cannot wait until the season change to make this tree change. That's true. Y'all not saying that. I had to already start it. So when the season comes, it is still, it is still producing. It is still being nurtured. It is still being flourishing. Y'all not saying nothing. And that's why some of you leaders that's on here, you looking at a change. And if some people leaving the house of God and some people are shifting and some people are doing whatever it is they doing, you don't understand. Don't worry about what you see. Realize glory to God that God is causing the change to happen on the current. So therefore you can have your next harvest. And when you look up, Isaiah will walk in your life and say, where did these come from? Where did these souls come from? 
come from, where do these sons and daughters come from. But if you caught up on what is happening right now, and my God, fighting against the change that you couldn't stop, y'all not saying that you would never come to your what? Your greater. God is not in the business starting and stopping. He's in the business of flowing. As I begin to run up out of here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all not saying nothing. So as I begin to pull all this together, you have to understand the Bible said in 1 Kings, 1 Kings, to my scribes, you write it down. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 5, verse 7 through 11, verses 11 through 27, verse 30, 33, 34 through 50. Watch this. You cannot stop change. David is the king at this particular time. Watch this. But David now is getting ready to go off scene. He's not off scene. He's still king. But one of his sons tried to intercept change. Y'all not saying nothing. Yes, and so he's over here and he depicts his own priest, his own prophet, his own whatever it takes to become a king. And begin to go and, and, and to sacrifice uh, whatever type of meat they were sacrificing for the banquet. Come on, y'all. Wow. To do what? To cause change to come to him. Because he wanted to become king. So there are people that's out there would try to intercept and, ca and cause what the change was supposed to come to you. Try to make it come to them. Because you can't stop change. That's it. But you don't need to be fearful of the change. And you don't need to be fearful of those that may try to sabotage. Those that may try to stop it. Those that may try to shut it down. You don't have to be fearful because that's what happened. Let me go over here. Because that's what happened. Uh, 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 verse, verse 5. Let me see. First Kings chapter 1 verse 5. Then Adonai. See the son of Haggai exalted himself. He exalted himself. What did Psalms say, 75 and 7? The Lord do what? Bring down and what? Bring up. Mm -hmm. But he tried to do what? Bring Make change himself on himself. And he right. tried to do what? Intercept the change from what? Solomon. But you can't stop the change, boo. <laughs> uh -huh. You can't stop. He couldn't stop the change. The change had nothing to do with him. I almost shot out my prophesying to somebody. You crying and say, but God, I thought you said I let me tell you something. Let me let me show you something. And I said this before. And I said the Lord showed me, glory to God, showed me a, a prophet's Bible a long, long time ago. Long, 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 long time ago. And he showed me that she was gonna match on me. And I said to the Lord, how is this gonna be done? She don't know me from Adam and Eve. How is this change going to come about? Guess what? My life didn't stop. It didn't uh, just slow down. You could not stop change. When the appointed time came, an appointed time wasn't just uh, the picture that y'all seen uh, last week. Right. No, it, it been happening. And now it's getting greater of her pouring into me and laying hands on me. But there was time that she didn't know me and I didn't know her, but God gave me a dream. And God showed me, mm -hmm. are you hearing me, that one day this will happen. And it didn't matter how many people were in her circle and how many people that she was laying hands on and how many people she was pouring into. Y'all not saying that because you can't do what? Stop you can't stop change. change. So when it was time for it to happen, it started coming into play. Are you getting this? Yes. So stop acting like people can alter anything. Stop acting like people can intercept or intercede of what God said. Y'all not saying nothing. They couldn't intercept, they couldn't intercede, couldn't delay it, couldn't stop it. You can't what? You can't they stop, stop change. change. Glory to God. No one is listening to a sister. You sitting here, yes, you at is. work, or you in the ministry, come on here, you helping or whatever the case may be, and you think because you see all these type of different people that's coming in to help to hold the arms of the vision because the vision is getting bigger. You can't. Use the same people with a big vision. You need more people. 
Amen. Amen. Because the vision is getting bigger. Right. So when you were just, you know, two and three people and the vision was yet big, but it wasn't time for it to walk in that type of capacity where you can handle it at three. Now that the vision is coming to a greater capacity now, you're going to need what? More people. But if you tripping about the more people that's coming to make the vision to come to pass in a greater capacity, you thinking that you're missing it. You thinking that, glory to God, you're going to be put to the side. But if you don't understand, you can't stop the change. If you just keep doing what you're supposed to do, whether at your job, whether at your house, whether, glory to God, in the ministry, and God showed you, it will not be forfeited. It. it would not be miscarried. It's going to happen. You're going to have to stop fighting change. Are you hearing me? So the Bible said, Adonai, first Kings, come on, first Kings chapter one. He tried to do what? Set himself up as to be king. He was trying to do what? Intercept. He was trying to do what? Sabotage. Are you hearing me? But that did not stop what? The season of change. The prophet that was with David overheard and knew because Adonai tried to do what? Stop them from coming. Right. He chose whom he wanted to choose mm-hmm. to set him up and put him in the place of the king. But yet David is still on scene. And David already promised Bathsheba what was going to happen. Are you hearing me? God made a promise in your life. And yes, baby, you in the harvest, but you acting like we going to stay in this harvest right here forever. No, there's greater. Did not Dr. Biden say that last night? Mm-hmm. Evidently, if there's greater, it surely ain't in this particular harvest. You know, it's in here. that new harvest. You know, and if you stuck in this side. harvest and saying this is... Let me tell you something. <laughs> Everything that you see from the realm of the spirit is what? Eternal. Right. The dreams that you see is in the realm of the spirit, which is what? Eternal. But when it comes into time, comes into the earth, now is what? Temporal. Right. Y'all not saying nothing. But as long as you see it in the realm of the spirit, it's, it's eternal. So if I saw my car in the realm of the spirit, it's eternal. But the time my girl, that's my car, 300, the time my girl showed up in the manifestation form in the earth, it now came into what? Temporal. Right. So that car is not going to forever, ever, ever be with me because it has now come into time. But while I'm sitting there and taking care of and being faithful to what God has given me. God is already moving and setting up something greater. Are y'all getting this? Mm -hmm. And if I get stuck on, this is my car for the rest of my life. And you can have that if you want to. (laughs) Maybe on one leg, but it's still in the the realm, the earth temporal. (laughs) Are you getting this? And God is already working on your next harvest. So the harvest you in now, the flow that you are in now, God is saying, tell them that that I'm going to say, you can't stop change. I'm already shifting. I'm already under sea, under, 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 undercurrent. Already preparing a greater harvest for them. But imagine now, there are people that will try to sabotage you, people that will try to intercept what's supposed to be for you. And if you don't have discernment, you'll fall right into that trap of the enemy. And you'll mess up the change. And you'll fight against the change. And so the Bible said the prophet that was a prophet of David read not to David, but ran to Bathsheba said, let me tell you, do you know, did you overhear what is happening right now? David is on the throne still, y'all. He's still king, but yet this is happening right now. How can that be? Does not a person become, uh uh-oh, uh-oh. No one becomes king when a person dies. A person that is going to succeed another person, it must be done at the time they're supposed to be still living and still functioning in that. That's why some people leave the earth and never have a what? A successor. Y'all not saying nothing. Right. You got to have the successor while you alive. Still working and doing what you're supposed to do. Because why? You can't what? Stop change. It has to do what? Keep going. Your your harvest is going to keep going, but it's going to be greater. But if you don't accept the change, if you don't discern the leaves that was on the ground was letting me know change has come. Not the leaves on the trees. It still looked like it was flourishing. It still looked like it was blooming. But the the leaves that fell on the ground was what discerning to let me know the time has changed. 
Y'all not saying that. that, that I'm saying. Wow. And so the, 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 the prophet went to Sheba and told her, did you not hear what was going on? Do you not know Adonai's over there trying to set himself up as king? Doing all what the ritual is supposed to be so he could be sitting on the throne. She said, no, I ain't overheard that. She said, oh, it's happening. He said, he said, let me give you, watch this. The prophet said, let me give you strategy. Because you can't stop change. So if you can't stop change, you're going to have to do what it takes so you can be in the change. Because if you don't, he's going to get this. Oh, I just said something. The prophet said, if you don't hear strategy, if you don't hear what I'm about to tell you to do, then what he is doing, he's going to come into it. Even though it's not for him, it's for Solomon. But you can't stop the change, Bathsheba. You can sit here and act like, because you with David and all that, that it's going to just come to Solomon. Because if that be the case, then Adonai would have never tried it. If it was just going to just come to him. He wouldn't have tried it. He's trying it. But if you sit here and eat crump cakes and drink your sweet tea and act like it's all set up that Solomon got this thing, you're going to miss it. Because you can't stop the change. You can't stop change. So hear me. Do what I'm telling you to do. So he said, who said? The prophet said to Bathsheba, go to David and tell David, didn't you say that my son Solomon was going to be the next king after you. He said, and when you talking to him, I'm going to come in. <laughs> the prophet going to come in and confirm it. But I'm telling you, if you don't do it, Bathsheba, it don't matter. You ain't going to be able to stop change. You can write all the letters you want. You can sit there talk about you tired. You're going to have to do the necessary things to make the necessary changes. Y'all not saying nothing. He said, follow my lead. He said, follow my lead, Bathsheba. I'm going to come right on in after you. And I'm going to confirm everything you say. So she went to David and said, my Lord. This is 1 Kings. Uh, 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 1. You can read chapter 1. Amen. Go on to the chapter 2. You can read it. It's in the whole text right there. And glory to God. So the prophet comes in. Nathan came in and said, well, everything she's saying, David, this is true. Adonai is over there setting himself up to be the successor to you, even though you still on the throne. Y'all not saying that. He may be, have been sick in the bed, but he was still king. Right. He was still on the throne. Even though he didn't react to women's body no more, he was still king. And even though he was still king, somebody was trying to, what, come into kingship while he was, what, still, still being king. king. Why? Because there was not supposed to be a breakage. You can't stop the change. Oh, God, this is good to me. And so the Bible makes it plain that the prophet confirmed to David and told David, this is true. He's over there right now. He did not incorporate, glory to God, Zadok, the priest. He didn't, he didn't incorporate Zadok, the priest, me, the prophet. He didn't, he didn't uh, cause us to come to sign on the dotted line that he was going to be accepted into this change. What David said, looked at Bathsheba and said, I told you that the change was going to happen and we can't stop the change. Solomon shall be king. He turns to the priest and turns to the prophet, said, get everybody together. Y'all ain't saying I'm going to run around this house. Get everybody together because I'm getting ready to make my son king. I'm still in kingship. I'm still in rulership, but I got to go ahead and put him because you can't stop change. And we cannot have a breakage. And surely Adonai was not called for this change. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So go and gather everybody. Put on my best robe on my son. Come on here. Put him on my best horse. Y'all not saying nothing. Put the crown on his head. Even though I'm still king. We'll probably see this some good stuff. Even though I'm still king. Do all this. Cause him to ride through the street. And say this is the next king. King Solomon shall be king instead of David. Now watch this. I'm out. The Bible says, while everybody in the city, because remember, Adonai only got a few people. Right. Few people that would go along with his schemes. 
hiss or trying to tear up something. But he was not chosen, even though you can't stop change. But he sure was trying to deter it his way. The Bible says that he and the rest of them overheard a loud noise, even though they had their crew and they crowd. And said, what is all that noise? Hello. What is that? And they begin to say, David just made Solomon king. Y'all not saying it. Why? Because you cannot stop change. You cannot stop the season of change. It was time for Solomon to become king, even while David was still in kingship. Wow. Was saying, because I'm getting ready to pass on, but I can't have a breakage. It already needs to still be what? In a flow. Come on now. The harvest of this, of, of this, of this, of this territory still need to be in the flow. So the son is over there saying, what, what, what's that noise? What in the world is going on? And, the, and they begin to tell him that Solomon, King David, has made Solomon king after him. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Adonai then sit there and say, it don't matter. I already intercept." It don't matter. I already sabotaged it. No, the Bible said, and everybody that was around him, Ruhu and him, ran. And he was sitting there in the midst, being fearful. Why? Because it didn't work. But if Bathsheba thought the change was going to stop, come on here, that it was just going to happen once David died, Hello. she could have made the choice to say, I hear you, prophet. But it's going to happen. He said, no, no, no. What you don't understand is you can't stop the season of change. You can't stop that when the point in time comes that there's going to be a king. But what you're going to do, you're going to miss the change by fighting the change, by sitting in your room with your girls, painting your nails and doing your feet and bringing you juice. It's still, you can't stop it, Bathsheba, but you better get up. And do what I'm telling you to do. See, yeah, baby, you can say, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's something you're going to have to do. Because you can't stop change. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But you're going to have to do something so that that is trying to form, it won't prosper. Because you cannot what? Stop change. Are you hearing me? Yeah, And so the Bible says she had to get up and move quickly. She had to do what the prophet told her to do Because you can't stop change This man over here thinking he's going to be king And he's trying to make it happen Are you hearing me? So it was going to happen anyway Change was going to happen to this kingdom But what God promised David was You should always have somebody from your loins on the throne But that doesn't stop people from trying To sabotage Trying to stop what's supposed to happen. You can't stop change, baby. That's it. So guess what I'm going to do? What you gonna do? Keep making sure I'm positioned. Right. Keep making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. That's it. Keep making sure my T's is crossed right. My I's are dotted right. Why? Because I can't stop change. Either I'm going to be over here and be slowful and somebody else is going to be riding in my car. And somebody else is going to get in my house. And somebody else. Are y'all getting this? Well, Pastor, what's for me? It's for me. Okay. What you were supposed to have last year, you ain't got it yet. Because you didn't know you was. Listen, you thought change was going to stop until you got yourself together. But somebody got the car. And now you waiting until this year when you were supposed to have it last year. Because you thought change was going to stop. No, precious. No, not happening. Not happening. Not happening. Not happening. She had to move swiftly because she couldn't stop change. Because it was going to happen either way. But it was supposed to go to Solomon. Are you getting this? So when it happened, Adam and I got fearful, got scared. Because now change was taking place and Solomon was now king. But David was still alive. This is what I need y'all to see. David was still alive. David was still walking in kingship, but he what? He pronounced 
the kingship shall come up on Solomon. Right. Are you getting this? Yes, so God ain't trying to wait until your harvest is totally over. Are you hearing me? No, God, the God that we serve is such a strategic God. He said, while y'all in your harvest and while things are happening for you, and yes, don't forget, you got to be circumcised. Yes. So why are you tripping about the cut? Why are you tripping about the slice on your hand? Did somebody uh, uh, cut your head, uh, cut your arm, and blood is bleeding? You got to be circumcised for the next harvest. But it's not going to start when this old harvest is over. Football, basketball don't start when football is totally over. Basketball is starting still while football is going on. Baseball is starting still while basketball is going on. We the only one in the body of Christ think everybody, all things got to come to a halt and then start over. That's not the will of God. You can't stop change. But if you don't discern that things have shifted and things have changed and that you've got to do what God is telling you to do, even if it looked like you don't think they looking at you like you don't know what you're doing. And reality is they not walking in discernment. Because you've already making the what the necessary changes. And then watch this. Once you made the necessary changes, when the manifestation comes, they were like, oh my God, you was already ready for this. It don't make no sense not to be ready for winter before winter comes. You now trying to run out there during the winter time. Come on, Midwest. Come on, East Coast. Snow all on the ground. And you trying to run out there now and get boots. Now and get a scarf and now get, you know, clothes and all that. You couldn't stop the change, but it was trying to be revealed to you early that the season have already changed. So go ahead and adapt to it now. Go ahead and make the necessary adjustments now. Oh, God. Glory to God. Put away what needs to be put away. Bring in what needs to be brought in. Are y'all listening? Yes, so therefore, when winter come, you still got everything. You ready with your windshield wipers. You ready with your shovel and all that stuff to make everything, glory to God, conducive to your life so you can keep what? Keep moving. Oh, yes. Are y'all getting this? Yes, My God from Zion. So you can't stop change. If God say you're going to be what it is he showed you, you're going to be it. But you got to understand, change is going to happen. So what you used to do, how you used to handle stuff, how you used to perceive, perceive things is going to be different. Why? It's because change has come to you. Don't be, don't be the one that you sit in there acting like somebody trying to sabotage your ministry, sabotage your marriage, sabotage your, your promotion, sabotage, and you know it. And you sitting there, seeing it in the realm of the spirit. And still won't make the necessary changes. So what they trying to do, it won't work. If Bathsheba was sitting in that room and did not do what the prophet said, oh boo, it was going to work for Ad Adonai. He could, nobody could stop the change. The prophet couldn't stop it. Bathsheba couldn't stop it. Come on here. Uh, Solomon couldn't stop it. Oh my God. If you just came on, I say to you, Go to the beginning of the teaching. Now, when I when you come, you'll see it for the 30-minute prayer because we're not seven-day consecration. But if you go ahead and you go through the prayer, if you want to go through the prayer, amen. But if you want to go on to the word, just go on and fast forward to the word so you can understand. You can't stop change. Don't fight change. And change doesn't start when everything has came and then nothing else has happened. No change been happening. But you never adapted to the change. You never discerned. The Lord said, look at the leaves that fell on the ground, daughter. It's the leaves that fell on the ground that's going to talk to you and tell you what time it is. Not the leaves that's on the tree that still look flourishing green. The leaves that's on the ground let me know the change has already started. Are you hearing me? And the leaves that was on the trees that fell to the ground now became what? Became brown. And you could clean up them, you could clean them leaves up off the ground, but that did not stop the, the change. change. You could clean it up and put it in a black bag and put it on the curb for the garbage man to do what? To pick it up. But it still would not stop change. 
And because you refuse to discern that God said, the harvest that you in, I got to go ahead and chip you again. Even while you're in the midst of this harvest. Because if you allow this harvest to deplete and you have nothing behind it, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Don't be like that woman that when the prophet told her, go and do what you said you was going to do with that cake. But do what? Pinch me off some. Because he changes already can. And she said, I can't do that because, you know, I only got enough of me and my son. She was trying to fight change and didn't even realize that it looked like the mirror bearer was dry, but it wasn't. Right. If she accepted the change, she right. couldn't stop the change. But if she would have did the strategic steps, she was going to see the mirror barrel flowing again. Why? Because God is not a God that he'll let us to come into a harvest, whether it's a harvest of souls, harvest of prospering in, in, in our physical body or physical finances. He is not the God that will allow something to just dry up and then we sitting there looking like, okay, God, what's coming next? No, he already shifted. That's why the Bible said in the fullness of time, change came. In the fullness of time, Jesus sent. While sin was going on, not when sin stopped, Jesus, the Lord sent Jesus. No, while, while sin came to its fullest, <laughs> whew, my God from Zion, Jesus was sent to the earth. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. So while we sit here acting like this harvest that you in, because you in a harvest, these blessings, this time that you are in, it's going to end. Why? Because you it's in the temporal. It's in the carnal time zone now. It came from eternal and entered in. Tell them that. I got to go. I've been on here long enough. I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> we all came from where? All of us. We came from heaven. All of us came from heaven. Yes, now, where you go when you leave here, that's another story. Got it? Yes, Whether you saved or not, we all came from heaven. That's all true. right? Whether you saved or not, whether you are saying um, you, have, you, have, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have an origin. You, yeah, you and I came from heaven. The Lord said, I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. What is that saying? You came from heaven. You came from heaven. But it's your choice where you're going to go back at the end. Wow. Okay, so since you know that, yes, you came from heaven. Yes, you came from eternity, right? Yes, so when we came from eternity, he wrapped us in temporal. Right. Wow. Because yes, we was coming in time. Oh, God. When you came into the earth, you now came to what? Time. Wow. So when the Lord showed you what he showed you, he showed you from eternity. Y'all not saying nothing. He showed you this has already happened. It's already happening in eternity. When it comes to you, it manifests in time. That, that was eternal. Because it was what? In the timing of God. And there is no time in God. He now sends it to the earth. And it is now manifested in your life. According to scripture, it is now considered temporal. It has a beginning and it has an end. But with God, there is no beginning and there is no end. But in the earth, there is beginning and there is end. So while you're looking at the flow in your life, while you're looking at the harvest in your life, whether it's souls, finances, health, marriage, children, whatever the case may be, while you're looking at it, the Lord is already working on your next harvest. That's why you got to keep sowing your seeds. And your seeds is not just money. Your seed of time, your seed of encouragement, your seed, glory to God, of helping others, giving food, giving clothes, working in ministry. Why? Because you got another harvest coming. Are you listening? And you cannot stop the season of change. Are y'all getting this? So stop looking at what you have right now as if it's going to be there forever. What God is working on is your next harvest. You cannot stop change. You can't stop it. And the God we serve is a God that causes greater greatness. Huh? 
even when Jesus was born, here Rod and anybody else that did not want it to happen could not stop change. Jesus still came to the earth. At the appointed time, he came. Are you hearing me? So it don't matter who's trying to come up against you, who's trying to sabotage, who's trying to make you look like that you a lie and you not. You don't have to worry. You're going to be like Bathsheba and listen to the prophet. Because why? David was still king. But Adonai was over there trying to do what? Raise himself up. If it was, if it was nothing to it, then prophet Nathan and the priest Zadok would not have ran to Bathsheba and said, you're going to have to do something because you can't stop this change. It's going to happen. Now, if you sit here and do nothing, then he's going to be king when it was for Solomon. Change is still going to happen, whether you want it or not. Change is going to happen. What God showed you, the dream he gave you, the prophecy he spoke to you, the word when you were studying he showed you, it's still going to happen because you can't stop change. But what will happen if you don't do the necessary steps you need to take for your next harvest? Your next harvest is already gathering itself up right now. While you in this flow and while you in this harvest, you got to be circumcised. You got to be cut on. But it's okay because I'm discerning. You can't stop change. Because as Dr. Bynum said last night in her master's class, greatness is waiting on you. It's not waiting on you that here it is, you fulfilled this, now you got to sit at the bus stop and start looking for the next bus. No. By the time you get off this bus of succeeding, there's already a bus driving by so you can just do what? Get right on it. And it's going to be still flowing and moving. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying? Stop looking at the situation as if the situation is coming to kill you. The situation is not coming to kill you. Stop looking at the situation of your life as if it looked like you have been depleted. Why? Because the leaves was doing what? Falling off the tree. You're not being depleted. Change has come. And you're going to your next harvest. But you got to be circumcised. You got to be cut on. Because you're going to your next harvest. And the Lord, whatever he's going to tell you to do, you need to do it. Don't fight change. Get discernment about change. Change don't come. Change don't come because you're just at the end. Can I say this and can I go? When you're in the 12th grade, or before you even get to the 12th grade, they're already talking to you about college. They're already giving you do what? Information. Because you will not be able to stop change. You're not going to always be in the ninth grade. You're not going to always be in the 10th grade. You're not going to always be in the 11th grade. You're not going to always be in the 12th grade. Change. You will go to college. So you got to already ready. Be ready for college before college time comes. Because you, won't, you will not be able to stop change. Is anybody listening? So dry your eyes, boo. Stop crying, boo. And act like you've been overlooked. Look at y'all looking at me. I ain't said that the whole time. Okay. You think they overlooked me. Mm -mm. They can't stop change. But what can happen is you can sit there and be a crybaby. Yeah. And say, woe is me. <laughs> and not adapt to the change nor discern that the change has already begun. And the Lord is telling you, Drop this off. Walk away from this. Don't do this. Don't go here. This is the eighth month, precious. This is the first day of August 2018. And the Lord said, you can't stop change. You can't stop the season of change. But before the manifestation of the change, you already adapted to it. You already did what needed to be done. So you could go to your next flow. So you could go to your next harvest. So you could go to your next miracle. So you could go to your next blessing. So you could go to your next promotion. It will not be a breakage. It will not be a breakage, precious. Hear ye me and the Holy Ghost. 
as we wrap it up. God has said many a things to you. God has showed you many a thing. But I said to the Lord when he showed me years and years ago, before I could physically shake Dr. Bynum's hand, before I could physically have her being poured into me, talking to me face to face, I said to the Lord, how is this going to happen? And the Lord said, you can't stop change. Nothing will cease this. Nothing will interrupt it. Nothing will be able to sabotage it. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Shift when I tell you to shift. Walk away from whatever I tell you to walk away from. Add to whatever I'm telling you to add to. And even if you look like you being played, you not being played. Because why? You can't stop change. And the day came that that time that God showed me that she was going to pour in my life. That she was going to mantle me. That she was going to be a great vessel. A great, oh God, a great tool in my life. I'm walking in it. Why? Because nobody could stop change. They could have talked. And they could say, they could say all, and they was trying to say, yes, there they go, trying to be like Dr. Bynum. There they go. No, yeah. I know who I am. Sure I know who's I am. But I also know who God has ordained and anointed to pour into me and to mantle me. I'm not running all over the place and say, will you mantle me? I'm not running all over the place and say, I'm not being like Adonai and trying to set my own self up. Y'all not saying nothing. I'm just following the lead of the Lord. And change came. Because you can't. Your enemies can't stop it. Come on. They can't delay it. And they cannot hinder it. Change still happened. Job said it best. In all of my days, I have a point in time that change is going to happen. But it's going to happen... Even while I'm still moving. So when that time comes, I have a new harvest. I'm in my building. Raw High Urban and Cypress. We are building again. And guess what? what? We can't stop change. What? But we're discerning. Change has already started. But I look like we're doing this right here. And this flourishing right here. There's an undercurrent that is happening in our life. And we're sowing to where we're going. Y'all not saying nothing. Because God is doing great things for us. He's moving us so fast. Y'all not saying nothing. He's really literally moving Cypress and Urban Rawhide Ministry fast. Yes, but it couldn't be seen really in a natural eye. That's it. You got to see it in discerning it. Because while everybody is looking and thinking and saying there's something going on. We accepting the change. And we adapting to the change. We're not getting comfortable. And we're not getting limited. God said there's greater for y'all. There's greatness. Oh, that word was for us. And if you had not heard it, yes, I am saying it. Even on my weather forecast channel, I'm telling you, you need to go see Tuesday night, the master's class. Y'all not saying nothing. Glory to God. You can't stop change. Glory to God. Wilma, they can't stop the change. Whatever God has for you, they can't stop it. Glory to God. Alicia, uh, Compass or Campus, they can't stop it. No one can stop the season of change. Delana Murphy, they can't stop the season of change. Glory to God. Discern when it's changed. Everybody not going to discern it, but you will. And just because it looked like you may be losing some things don't mean you losing it because you won't have no more. What is happening is God is making room for more. You can't have what you have and then have more. Come on. He allowed you to use what you need to use right there and then said, okay, now let that go because I'm getting ready to bring you greater. So if you have not, amen, went to uh, Dr. Bynum's page, you go there. So you could be able to hear that and understand this. Okay. Are you hearing me? Because nobody can stop the season of change for your life. I love y'all so much. 
Don't forget, everybody, the book that we're reading, because we're in our seven days of consecration, is the book of Song of Solomon. Tomorrow will be another book. Go to my wall, and I'll keep putting it up, the consecration of what we're doing, how we're doing it. And if you want to be a part of it, please acknowledge the Lord. It's not that it's bad. It's a good thing. You just need to make sure it's the timing for you. Come on, if the Lord say so, come on, join us in the seven day of consecration. God is doing something great. And he's already revealing to us that we're walking into greatness. But if we don't discern, the change is already happening before everybody else. We are going to miss the greatest hour of our life. Are you hearing me? Don't be like that woman that tried to fight change when the prophet said, break me off some. Because your meal bear is going gonna, gonna to flourish. It's not going to It's not gonna stop. It's going to flourish. Amen. Please don't forget, I want to see you. If you're anywhere in the vicinity, North Carolina, I want to see you. That's next Friday. Next Friday is going to be here so quick. Yes, I want to see you in the building. Please share it. For some reason, everybody is not getting it. When I went to New York and people knew I was in New York preaching after the fact, they were saying, Apostle, I didn't know you was there. I would have came. So that's letting me know, everybody, even though I'm thinking that it's going to all my friends, everybody is not getting my flyers for whatever reason. I need your help. I need you to go on my page and pull that flyer and send it to your friends so everybody can know that God has opened the region of North Carolina to Vanessa Jackson Global Ministries to be a blessing to the people in North Carolina. So we would love to see you. We would love for you to be a part of this great move of God. Next Friday, we're coming to North Carolina. But until then, don't forget, we're in our seven days consecration. And don't forget, you can't stop this season of change. It's here. God is doing a great thing. He's doing a good thing. And he's getting ready to do a greater thing. So you be encouraged. Until next time, y'all know how we do it. If you want to sow by any means, by every means, go ahead and sow. So whether you sow now or sow on the seventh day of the consecration, that's what we're going to do. So there will be a season, there will be a time that you'll be sowing for this consecration, which is the seventh day of, and I'm going to come back on the seventh day, and I believe that's a Tuesday. So I'll be coming back on Tuesday to conclude the matter of the consecration so you'll have your time to sow. So if you want to sow now, you're welcome to sow now. Oh, oh wow. So if you like to sow now, you can go ahead and sow now. Or you can wait until the seventh day of the consecration and go ahead and, and sow. Well, precious, you and I can't stop the season of change. But we need to discern where we at. You go with God, and God, he'll go with you. May the blessings of the Lord make you rich, and it adds no sorrow. If you're in the vicinity of this month in August, in Irving, the prophets speak. We have different prophets, yes, prophets and prophetess that will grace our pulpit and begin to prophesy to preach, to catapult us wherever God is calling us and taking us to. And I would like to invite you personally. See me on next Sunday or this Sunday coming up or the second Sunday or the third Sunday or the fourth Sunday at 115 in Irvine. And then in September, the prophets will speak in Cyprus. Glory to God. Raw Hot Ministry. We happy. We so excited. We just keep on moving and doing what God has called us to do. We love everybody. God bless you.